Hello everyone. Uh, today we are covering the basics of software defined radios and practical applications and it starts with the definition of software defined radio and related challenges. So, what is software defined radio? Uh, as the name suggests it has two portions one is software and then one is radios. So, whenever the function of a radio that are defined in digital domain it is defined at as uh, software defined radios. Initially in uh, US defense labs in 1970s the work started where they have started implementing the functionality of any receiver in digital domain. Eventually in 1991 uh, Joe Mitola in his thesis he proposed this term software defined radio where most of the functions of the radios are given in the digital domain. So, what are the requirements here? If you look at the slide, it provides reconfigurability by controlling functionality of the software and it should be able to adapt with the dynamic behavior of the system. So, uh, a conventional uh, radio when we are talking about it, it contains a particular frequency, particular amplitude and particular format, but when we say software defined radio, it should be able to switch between these different uh, parameters. Moreover, uh, because we are moving towards a new age, new era of the communication system, there should be adaptability so that we can embrace the new advances in communication. So, when these are the software defined radio uh, bullet points, what are the requirements that are, that are required here? So, the requirements are that software defined radio platform should support software defined solutions. So, first of all we have to have that platform. So, it have a good it should have a good and log solution as well as platforms which should have a inbuilt DSP which can support this kind of solutions. Uh, second as the name suggests software is a part of this software defined radios. So, there would be some digital algorithms to implement functionality of a radio. Then we should have some algorithms which will be doing ex ex exactly what we are proposing there and then there should be algorithm compatibility with the available digital signal processors. What do we mean by the compatibility? There are two things first of all you are proposing something in a ideal environment, but then when you want to port it to digital signal processors that processor might be your PC, that might be your FPGA or uh, uh, you know some uh, platform such as Ubuntu, Ubuntu based platform. So, if it is a floating point and environment you can have the algorithm which are working perfectly fine there, but then there are some platform uh, which are low cost and they utilize FPG etcetera. In that case your algorithm should work very nicely with a fixed point computation environment. Apart from that what else we require we should have the low digital signal processing cost because we are doing everything in digital domain. What is the motivation for going for the software defined radio? Initially when we used to have simple communication by using a radio which we use at our home for you know listening to cricket commentary etcetera that was analog communication based. You, you should have seen the AM uh, tuning or FM tuning there, but if you look at this evolution of communication standards you can see that even uh, initially for the first it was only voice then we came to SMS and voice more applications added there. Now, eventually in 3G TV internet, video calls, SMS and voice all of them was uh, there. Today, we have reached the stage where we are using 4G and it is a seamless multi mode. It also have online gaming uh, video calls as uh, on top of that the previous TV, SMS and voice applications. So, we are increasing, increasing in the terms of generations. So, if you look at the IEEE standards, they have the different versions of the same standard. So, it was 802.11a, then we went to B, then we had something uh, called G and B, G, N, all three versions they uh, support WLAN and Wi Fi. Then in the LTE, which is uh, 3G and 4G combination, we have seen more applications added there. Now, if you look at the speeds, it was initially for first generation 1.9 kbps for 2G it was 14.4 kbps and then it keep increasing in 4, 4G we propose to have 400 mbps and finally, we are moving towards 5G and in the 5G 
we have very ambitious goal of getting 1 Gbps speed. So, we are uh, targeting more and more uh, Mbps uh, that is data rate and for that we have to have more complex uh, communication standards and uh, modulation techniques. And when we are talking about this modulation techniques, we they cannot be achieved with the analog uh, platform because analog have their inherent uh, fabrication errors, etcetera. So, it is it becomes the motivation for the software defined radio. So, now for the software defined radio, first of all, we have to go through the basic components of the communication system uh, analog portion and the digital portion, the basic concept, and then we will see what are the limitations which are uh, which we have to target there. So, communication system basically targets to optimize two factors, first is high information processing means we want to be able to send more bits, more bits means more information which you want to uh, send there and second is the transmitted power. Uh, why is that? If you look at the Shannon's uh, channel capacity theorem, the channel capacity is given as the bandwidth of the signal multiplied with the log base to 1 plus signal to noise ratio. So, any signal which have a good signal to noise ratio, good dynamic range, it has a uh, better ca uh, capacity. Moreover, it has the capacity has the direct relation with the bandwidth of the signal. So, when we look at this to get more data rate, we have to have more broadband system and if most of the providers they are looking for a broadband system then we have the deficiency of the spectrum. So, there is a requirement of the spectrum there. Moreover, we have to have good uh, enough transmitted power because when you want to transmit a signal through a particular medium to a long distance you have attenuations, you have uh, you know it is uh, bouncing from different uh, mediums. So, basically the power goes down. So, in that case we have to have enough transmitted power that it can it can reach to the final end there. Moreover, this signal to noise ratio we have to keep high enough power of the signal with respect to noise so that we have good uh, bit rate there. So, keeping these two requirements in mind we will go through the basic components of the communication system and then uh, we will go to the basic SDR. Uh, uh, applications and what are the hindrance there, what are the limitation bottlenecks there and we will try to solve them. So, in a particular digital communication system, we have a RF transmitter and one RF receiver. This is a wireless communication uh, system where our uh, medium is basically just the air through which the signal is being transmitted. So, it has different portion. First of all, we have digital portion which is uh, inside the RF transmitter and what are the parts of this digital system because they make the basis for a software defined radio. First of all, you should have a information in bits. So, whenever you have some data, it is represented in terms of binary digits what we call bits. So, basically they are uh, given in terms of 0 and 1s. So, whenever you have a signal this coming in time t. If suppose it is an analog signal, it will look like this. Basically in this signal, when we do the quantization, so depending on the level of quantization, you will create bits. For example, if this number of quantization is equal to 16, it means we have to represent our system in the 16 levels. So, by that uh, definition if we have to have 16 bits, so what is their binary representation? And the last one is 
is this. So, you have uh, 16 levels, it is number of levels and these are bit repre representation and they signify, uh, signify basically numerical value. which is 0, 1. So, 0 will be corresponding to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2 and up to 15 and it is showing 16 different labels. So, this information if I want to represent 0, it will be 0, 0, 0 and then suppose I want to read this value and it is corresponding to uh, 2, right. So, after that it will be 0, 0, 1, 0. If I want to send 3 after that, it will be 0, 0, 1, 1. So, you can see it is a stream of binary digits which, which we call uh, bits. So, it has only two states either 0 or 1. So, basically we can represent our information in this form. If it is in a log, we can convert it back into digital and represent it like that. So, basically once we have our stream of bits, a uh, symbol presents a set of bits. It means a symbol can have either 1 bit or more than 1 bit, it can be 2, 4, 8, 16 depending on the modulation we have chosen. Now, symbol per second, it is called baud rate. So, normally we propose that we this is our symbol speed at this speed we are sending our symbols and inside one symbol you can have many bits. So, you can uh, imagine that uh, bits are like balls maybe it is white color ball and red color ball and when you compile them when we put them in a box those boxes suppose contain 4 balls at a time. So, each box is representing a symbol there and this is how we say okay, this many box we have communicated. Now, bit rate is the product of symbol rate and the number of bits encoded in each, each symbol. Now, encoding techniques are used on bits to lessen the error in decoding the bits. Therefore, the number of information bits are less than the transmitter bits. So, those bits which we are using for the encoding are also used eventually although they are not useful bits, but they are useful for detecting the error. Now, coming to the second part which is the modulation. So, first you have your information in bits, you uh, mapped it in uh, particular symbols after keeping some bits for the encoding, now we come to the modulation. So, modulation is a technique to facilitate transfer of an information over a medium. So, basically uh, process in which more one or more of the characteristic parameter of the carrier signal can be varied. Uh, in accordance with the message signal, we call it modulation. For example, suppose our carrier signal is a sinusoidal signal. So, this is the equation for the sinusoidal signal. We have amplitude there, phase and frequency. So, whenever we vary any of these things, then it becomes modulated in terms of that parameter. So, because software defined radio deals with the digital modulation technique, so we will just stick to that. We are not going into the analog portion there. This is the example of the modulation. Suppose our bit stream is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So, we are representing it in this uh, format here and suppose we want to apply amplitude shift keying. How do we apply this? Whenever our signal is given by uh, once we have our data there, whenever is our signal is given by a 0, we do not have any data there. So, it is easy to detect, uh, it is a low cost system, it changes the amplitude with each symbol, it is changing only amplitude. So, the frequency is constant, because frequency is constant, bandwidth is fixed for that frequency and our bandwidth requirements are quite low. Now, it is also susceptible to interference. Why is that? Now, uh, this is your uh, incoming signal there, right? In it is time and it is x t. So, either you do not have a signal or you have signal with the fixed frequency, something like this. So, 
the detection happen based on the amplitude. Suppose there is attenuation at a particular instance, suppose let us say at this instance suddenly it encountered, uh, encountered uh, attenuation because of the multipath, what will happen that it will look like this to your receiver. Okay, so, in this duration it is finding something and here suddenly it encountered attenuation, so it became very small. It is possible that your envelope detector which is basically detecting the amplitude will mistakenly think that it is near to 0 and it will not detect this portion and what will happen? Instead of reading 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, it will detect, should detect this and what it detects is actually 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 and it also it detects as 0, okay. which is wrong. So, more susceptible to interference. Now, we, uh, we can do one more thing, it, this example was only for uh, two level amplitude means you have only uh, 0 and 1s. So, it means whenever uh, you have 1s, you have just one amplitude, if it is 0, it is simply 0, but you can have even more levels. Okay, so, when we are talking about four level ASK, we will have four levels. So, levels will be 1, 2, 3 and 4 and amplitude which will be representing them will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So, basically in the bits form they will be seen as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, what will happen in this case? For example, in this example. Uh, it is our carrier signal and our amplitude level are given by four factors there. So, for example, we want to represent uh, 0 1. So, 0 1 is represented as 1. So, we have four amplitude levels 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have four levels. Now, we will see our information from here. This is what we want to detect right and we have taken four levels. So, we, we can have two bits at a time. So, 0 1 which is the first level will uh, it, it will be represented as this one. Then the next one is 1 0 which is 2. So, second level which will be represented as this one. Third is again 0 1. So, it will be this one. Then 1 0 something like this. So, if correspondingly we will uh, see in the ASK modulation. So, it will be a small magnitude here then little bit more bigger amplitude here and from here it will be small again, from here it will be again big, right. So, it will be and by chance this information has only two states 0 1 and 1 0. If it has uh, there is a possibility of two more state which is this one and zeros here. Right. So, it is four level. Now, what is the problem here? Detection is even more difficult here because we have four levels and if any multipath comes into picture, then it will impact this, this portion. This portion can easily can be uh, uh, mistaken for this path. Similarly, if this is uh, facing the attenuation, the smaller amplitude it can go near 0 and it can be mistaken for this form. So, we will have 
wrong representation of the bits. So, we can go to the high level ASK, but that will be really giving us uh, wrong results. So, that is why we move to other techniques. Next is frequency shift scheme. So, we can uh, see from here there are two frequencies. Uh, whenever we have zeros here, we have a smaller frequency here. Whenever we have ones, we have higher frequency here. And for each zero, we can see the broadening of the pulse which is representing the lower frequency. So, it is a frequency shift scheme. Now, what are the main um, features of their change in frequency with each symbol? Because we are using two frequencies here, so for sure it will be requiring larger bandwidth because we have to cover both the frequency. Now, frequency we are changing, but we have to be sure that phase is not changed there, phase synchronization should be there between different frequency sources. Moreover, whenever there is sudden frequency change, then there might be a phase change. So, as you look here, whenever there is a jump there, any, any discontinuity is there, that discontinuity can be represented as a delta function or impulse function. So, this is what we are seeing here impulse function. The FFT in the frequency domain that impulse function is given by a constant 1 for all the frequencies. So, this is the formulation when we are converting it from the time domain to frequency domain. When we try to convert it back to the frequency domain and uh, solve it for uh, uh, other modulation techniques, we can see that it is a combination of all the frequencies cosine terms we can see here. So, basically whenever there is a jump in, uh, in a time domain, it will lead to the much distortion in the frequency domain at a uh, very wide band uh, range. So, we do not want it. So, the, because of this we have Gaussian frequency shift king kind of frequency uh, shift king schemes like F, F, uh, GFSK and there are other variations also we are not covering those they are covered in digital communication courses mostly, but we want to have a background of this technique. Now, the third one is phase shift king. So, initially in the amplitude we are changing the amplitude in frequency where we are in the frequency as name suggests we will be changing the phase uh, in this scheme. So, whenever you have a 0 we are having a change of a 180 degree uh, and whenever there is a 1 we are keeping it constant for that one. So, there are two phases there. So, this phase shift king uh, basically can be represented uh, in, in terms of constellation diagram. So, Constellation diagram basically has a in phase and a quadrature phase. So, when we say binary phase shift king, we do not have any magnitude there, only phase is changing there. So, it has only two conditions. So, 1 and minus 1, it just takes two values. What do we mean by 1? Whenever it is 1, it, it has phase shift of 0 degree and whenever it is minus 1, it has phase shift of pi. Theoretically, a phase location can be assigned to any pre-decided uh, bit value. So, this pre decided convention should be followed at transmitter as well as receiver, then it should be able to decode it properly. So, basically uh, we can see here we can choose this shift in phase uh, to be equal to 0 and it will represent bit value of 0 or we can choose it pi and it will be for the bit value 1. Alternatively, we can choose del phi is equal to pi for bit value 0 and phase change of 0 for bit value of 1. As long as the same convention is used for both the transmitter and the receiver, we are good. So, apart from this uh, normal BPSK scheme, it can also be re represented in a differential manner uh, uh, which is called DBPSK. So, if you look at this diagram, this is what is happening. As long as there is 0, 
the phase is not changing whenever a new uh, variation in the bit, bit comes in then it changes. So, for example, after zeros we are having ones and when we are having ones then we see this shift in phase and it keeps going we are not changing with the both the ones instead whenever we encounter a new change means bit is changing from 1 to 0 then we have this reversal here and when this 0 to 1 is happening then we have another reversal otherwise whenever we have same bits we are not changing the phase. So, it is called differential phase shift it is, it is more uh, uh, efficient because we are not changing the phase often as long as bits are same we are keeping them same otherwise for each one we have to apply a plus 20 divided degree and for each uh, 0 we have to keep it same. So, this is more efficient. So, PSK is more complex especially when we go to higher level uh, there is a change of uh, phase in uh, with each symbol we need phase synchronization otherwise it is very difficult to recognize where the phase have started and we will read it as a wrong phase. Now, because we are changing things in phase we have a constant amplitude and because we have a constant amplitude we mostly use it in the preamble of LTE and LTE advance uh, kind of signal which are the basis for the 3G and 4G signals. Now, why do we need this constant amplitude we will cover later because we are going to cover the analog portion of the radio there we, you will see that we have a nonality in our transmitter path and when uh, this nonality comes with a varying amplitude signal then it dist uh, the distortion occurs. When you have constant amplitude there is no distortion there is only attenuation according to the uh, that uh, range of the power amplifier. So, we will cover it later. So, basically phase shift giving there it, it is uh, used uh, for the higher uh, order uh, modulation techniques also. Now, the next is the pulse shaping. So, whenever you have a pulse shaping then you will you can contain the information in a narrower bandwidth. So, we require it why is that whenever we have a pulse signal in the time domain you have a pulse signal if you take the frequency domain transformation of this one and plot it in the frequency domain you will find that it gives a sync function. So, while your pulse is contained from minus t by 2 to t by 2 you have this is the pulse width you have its frequency domain uh, transform is actually you know going through plus and minus frequency and it is uh, much broadband than what you want to send. So, we need to have a frequency shipping because our inputs are what they are bits basically right. So, even after modulation mapping this is something what you are sending right 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 something like this. So, as, as you can see here these bits they have this triangular form and when they will be converted back into frequency domain and we want to transmit in the analog domain there then you will find that they are quite broadband and they take lots of space. So, we do the pulse shipping now if our pulse in time domain is looking like a sync function then its frequency domain is actually coming out to be a pulse which is a contained form. So, basically this one will be contained in minus omega 2 by omega 2 that omega will be defi uh, defined by the width of this. Uh, root cosine function. So, what we try to do whatever is our input it does not look like this actually we do little bit shaping here. So, it looks something like this it is not square anymore it becomes more continuous and then it, it, it is contained mostly in a particular bandwidth not is contained within a bandwidth. So, we can transmit it uh, easily 
to the higher frequency. After that we have D to A conversion, whenever your uh, signal is in digital domain you have done the shaping, now your signal is ready to be transmitted and it is band limited within a particular bandwidth. Now you want to transmit it, now to transmit it you have to send uh, convert it into a analog domain. So, this portion which we have covered till now it contains uh, it is a basically digital domain it has information bits then you have uh, performed a modulation you have done the pulse shaping and then after that once your signals contained you are going to do digital to analog conversion now it is in in a log domain now once it is in a log domain it was signal was contained at zero frequency basically it was the shaping in the frequency domain but the middle point of the frequency the carrier frequency was zero now once you have converted it to analog domain you get the same thing and now you are in analog domain and you will have same signal after d2a conversion in x rho analog domain. Now if you have a small digital IF it might be shifted to that new frequency or it might remain at the 0 frequency. So till this portion we have converted from digital to analog. In the next lecture we will covering the analog to RF conversion and the basic uh, requirement of this system.